and I'm going to talk about how I installed this fuel tap in this Sprinter tank. So this is the tap that comes with the uh, heater itself and you can uh, buy these on Amazon if your heater didn't come with one but if you buy the one I bought it's going to come with it and they say to put this I believe they call it a stove pipe directly into the tank itself which means you're going to have to drill a hole into the tank and uh, mount the uh, stove pipe. That doesn't make sense for me. I don't want another hole where there's going to be a leak point, particularly because there is already an auxiliary tap built in with tubing uh, into this tank. So if we can just tap onto the auxiliary tap, we'll be good to go. However, the auxiliary tap is only about four, let's just call it, it only goes about two thirds of the way deep. And you want a tap that goes deeper than that. You want to tap your tank to the deepest depths of the fuel so that regardless of the size of your tank whether you have the stock tank which is 47 gallons sorry 24 gallons or the s b tank which i'm installing here which is 47 gallons you can get as much fuel as you need and so i'm going to install this with the nipple facing up and just attach it with a coupling to this stock valve after I take off that mesh screen. And that way I'm getting fuel from the tank all the way down to about, let's just call it one inch of depth. So once it drops below that one inch of depth, it's only going to feed the main line. But above that one inch of depth, you know, assuming the van's level, if it's parked on a slope, uh, it's got to be in the right direction. Uh, it's going to be able to suck in the uh, diesel fuel into the heater. So first things first, we snake it in. And once it's snaked in there, we'll take off that little mesh screen because we don't want to have any obstructions uh, in this uh, tap that are on the inside of the tank. We want those on the outside of the tank so we can change them, aka a small inline fuel filter. Those things are cheap and you can change them much easier when you when they're on the outside of the tank versus if they're on the inside of the tank. So we're taking that thing off and just thinking for a minute, maybe we should coupling this thing onto the end of this nipple, but ultimately we're deciding now. We're just gonna let it suck up whatever it sucks up and trust that it's gonna get caught in the fuel filter and nowhere else in the auxiliary line. Now that that's done, we will use a piece of this fuel line hose, the black fuel line hose that came with the heater. Another just pro is they just they send you so many components that help with stuff like this uh, as you design your fuel tap system for your heater. And we connect that directly to the auxiliary line. And now we are going to fabricate, which is just a fancy word for making something that doesn't exist. We're going to fabricate some pipe clamps out of stainless steel wire. Now I could have used a cable zip tie and I was just more paranoid about corrosion or breakdown of that plastic in this tank over time. So I went with this. I also could have used actual hose clamps or fuel line clamps. I just didn't have any in my garage. Didn't want to wait for Amazon or drive and lose build time on my precious weekend to get those components. So, uh, fabrication of wire clamps is what I did and I ended up putting three on testing two different designs for the clamps and third and final and now they are on and we are looking cable. good trimming off the excess this next part you can only do if you have this model fuel tank which is an SNB 47 gallon fuel tank so we're taking off this component which I think is some sort of vent structure where it vents air pressure so um you don't run into problems with that and I am looking to make sure my uh, float valve is not cut up on anything caught up on anything I'm looking at the uh, baffle structure that's there just visualizing where the fuel is going to sit and then I'm looking at the stock fuel tap for the main fuel system the primary driver and just making sure there's no obstructions there what I can't see is my auxiliary tap. So we switch that around and now we can see that the auxiliary fuel tap is in the same orientation and really the same location of the stock fuel tap. 
uh, that nipples it's resting on its side and so we just have good clarity on what's going on and and that's going to help us gauge uh, our fuel so if, if we're not getting fuel on our diesel heater we're we should pretty much have an empty tank and the vehicle fuel system is going to be very close to having problems too because the depth is the depth difference is fractions of an inch uh, between the two uh, input ports and then one last check of our float valve and that's free and clear of instruction of obstructions and that's very important because it won't work if it's caught up on something preventing it from floating when the fuel level rises or dropping when the fuel level drops one last shot there um, showing a little bit more perspective on the difference in height between the tap we added and the stock tap. Okay, so now we can button this back up, uh, put all these screws back in with Loctite this time around. So they are locked in the way they should be using blue Loctite because who knows, we might need to pull those out again someday. All right, moving forward, we are disconnecting these stock fuel line taps because we're going to put this ring back on and it's going to click back on the same way it did when we took it off but in reverse and after that the tank's done it's ready to go back in i'm not going to cover too much more of that because it's a long process and i have a whole other video that shows all those steps so just search for that on the channel and you will find it keyword tank in any case, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.